I want to show you the content, the content of the Abrahamic blessing. The what? The what? Content. Whether blessings or curses, they are conveyed through words. It is the content that determines the outcome in the life of the person. Amen? Amen. If a person is cursed, the curse is coming out as a word or a statement. It is what is inside that is about to happen. And if a person is blessed, the blessing is conveyed in a statement. And it is what is inside that will manifest. Sometimes the statement looks like it is going to the north and the manifestation looks like it is going to the south, for instance. In Genesis 49, Jacob cursed Reuben. And he said, Reuben will not excel. In Deuteronomy 33, we found out that the manifestation of that curse means that the lineage of Reuben will die early. Elisha cursed Gehazi and said, let the leprosy of Naaman cleave to you and your lineage. And the Bible said, instantly he became what? Leprous. And God blesses and also sends his servant to bless. We have received the commandment to bless. So the content is what determines the what? The manifestation. So this morning, I bless you. Amen. And I speak into your life. Excel. I speak into your lives, go forward. Amen. I speak into your life, experience stagnation no more. Amen. Now, sit down. So I'm going to do a lot of blessings this morning. Amen? Oh, yes. Do you believe that when words go out, the power of God is here to back it up? Oh, yes. You will experience stagnation no more. And you go forward only. Amen. Nothing dies in your hands. Amen. Are you aware? It's a big statement we say in Sphere of Light Church. That nothing dies in our hands. Amen. Say it again. Nothing dies in my hands. In my hand. When I touch anything, they work. They don't die. When I lay out on things, they work. They don't die. Nothing dies in my hands. That's the blessing I have. Glory to God. We are blessed. Genesis chapter number 27. Isaac had called Esau. And he said, Esau, I want you to go prepare me a venison. Although God had said before both of you were born that the blessing should go to your younger brother. But I want to give you. He said, I want to eat the venison that my soul bless you and then I die. So Esau went to look for venison. And Rebekah heard and prepared the similitude for Jacob. In verse 27. Genesis 27, verse 27. I want to show you the content, not the story, the content of the blessing. So, and he came near, that's Jacob now, towards Isaac and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. That's descriptive. If a man will be blessed, first there's an aroma he carries. I remember years back, I was in a place and um, there were hundreds of thousands of people there. And someone was so excited to see me in the crowd. And, and it was someone who, who was close to me somehow. So out of excitement, she just jumped on me. Say, so good to see you, sir, so good to see you. She was excited, I was excited. But 
as he jumped, I perceived a deep smell. It was so bad, I needed to leave that place to bath. And it was so bad, it didn't leave me for more than a week. So occasionally I'd come around people. I say, Can you smell anything? They said they can't smell. Ha ha. Hey. You, you, you. I just hug people I should not hug. Come. Just hug. Hey, how are you doing? Guy, you know passive anything. I know I know feel him. You know feel him. <laughs> what kind of smell is this that is customized for me? <laughs> this custom made smell. The sister sent me a message. It was nice to see you. I didn't reply. It wasn't nice to see you. I've not recovered. <laughs> I almost took my bath with Isaiah. But anything in the category of what should be used, I used. I put plenty of detail into water. I almost put perfume inside water. I, the smell was deep. Then, when God saw my struggle, then God said, oh, that thing you have been praying for her about, this is the hindrance. It is a smell in the spirit. When favor comes around, that's what they hear. And it pushes them away. So command it to be canceled. Even me as the pastor, I didn't want to see her again. How much more somebody will? When Isaac came near Jacob, and when Jacob came there, he said, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. You are not yet there, but you smell like it. Then he said, therefore, the Lord give you of the dew from heaven. That's a very weighty pronouncement. Huh? I said that was a weighty pronouncement. Wow. On what account did he begin to bless him? On the account of the smell. It was not on the account of the venison. It was on the account of something that stirred up the prophet in him. said, give strength, give, give here. You shepherd of Israel. You that sit between the cherubims. Shine forth. You are the one who lead Joseph like a flock. You sit between the cherubims. Shine forth. There are... There's something about this morning. Hold on. I don't know if you have walked before. And you, you, maybe your just cobwebs just came over your face and you feel, eh, this must be something demonic. No, it's, it's nature. Relax. It's nature. Okay? It's nature. Don't see demon in everything, including cats. When, when we get to heaven, God will judge between Nigerians and cats. Sorry, when this thing comes like this, I lose my steez. There are clouds that opens over a man that from the moment that cloud opens over the man, the man is implicated. In Yoruba, they will say, Otifara Konkon, he, 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 has, he has touched something. Mm, some, something that will alter his experience. He, he has entered something. This morning you have entered something. And your experience has been altered. Sit down for a while. Sit down for a while. There are things you can't describe when they came. But you can know that everything changed. 
So when he said, the Lord your God give you, let heaven open to give water that won't make noise. Then let the earth respond in fatness. He said, the Lord your God give you of the dew from heaven. And the fatness of the earth, as long as there is dew, the earth will be fat. It, listen to what I'm saying. The same way I described how somebody hugged me and the smell was custom made. Dew from heaven can be custom made on men regardless of location regardless of the experience of people it is a custom made deal locked on a man something is locked in on you this morning the heaven will give you its deal I said the heavens will give you its deal the heavens will give you its deal the earth will yield in its strength. Sit down for a while. Isaac didn't say, the Lord your God give your land due from heaven. It should be, that would make sense. He said he gives you. It didn't matter how dry it was anywhere else. It won't matter anymore. You will have water. That's the content. It won't matter. It won't matter. What's up there? It won't matter. When Jesus was baptized, give me that scripture, Matthew 3, in the river of Jordan, the Bible said, and heaven was opened unto him. Heaven can be opened over territories, but it can lock on a man that it becomes the spot on the earth upon which there is transaction between the spiritual and the physical. There can be custom made window. It locks on him that when he goes to the right, the opening of heaven goes to the right. When he goes to the left, the opening of heaven goes to the left. When he goes forward, the opening of heaven goes forward. Hear me? When a man understands that, there are no specific greener pastures for him. It becomes the spot on the earth that you falls. Where it goes becomes green. Again, I insist that the Lord your God give you of the dew from heaven. And he gives you of the fatness of the earth. Let the words from my mouth this morning run like dew. That they will visit every thirsty ground. Can I give you 30 seconds to pray? I have the dew from heaven. And the fatness of the earth. The Lord my God has given to me the dew from heaven. And the fatness of the earth. The dew from heaven. And the fatness of the earth. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Sit down. We, we all hear the sound when it rains. But when there's dew, you only see the effect. It is noiseless. It is noiseless. You wake up to discover everywhere is wet. There's rain. It is a blessing. But there's dew. No noise. Just effect. No noise. No noise. That's, that's the content. The content of the Abrahamic blessing is the blessing of an heaven that is opened. You see, when you despise that, that the supernatural controls the physical, you will work like men and struggle. But there's power in the blessing. So when we say the blessing, the blessing, let me show you the content of the blessing. Give me 
in amplified rendition. Look, I want you to look at the content of the blessing. In amplified translation. Psalms chapter number 1 from verse 1. Amplified. Look at it. Psalms 1.1. 1, 1. Give me an amplified rendition. Can they do that? Now look at it. What does it mean to be blessed? Number one, to be fortunate. Number two, to be prosperous. Number three, and favored by God. In fact, this is not complete. There's to be happy and to be enviable. There comes a time in a man's life that he's still doing everything as usual, but something now has landed. His skin tone has not changed. His dressing might not have changed. But all eyes that sees him pay attention. Have you seen people that you are wondering what changed? It looked like they moved from zero to hundred in no time. See, the secret is the hand. Though. When that hand comes, when that hand, when that hand comes, when that hand. See, you will you will sit down and regret eh, envying anyone. Because what it had taken people 15 years to accomplish is happening in a week. There is a God that controls times are in his hands. He can shrink it. He can elongate it. Are you here? Yes, it shrinks time. I've given you this illustration several times, but I won't stop till you get it. Can I have three people? Look at it. This is the illustration again and again. These are the seasons of man. The morning phase, the afternoon phase, and the what? The night phase. When a child is born, the child ought to be born in the morning phase. And that's the phase of beauty. Everybody wants to carry a new baby. They want to peck the child. They want to hug the child. They want to dance with the child. <laughs> but once we enter into afternoon phase, there's no free hug. Nobody wants to carry you. You work. And at night, the night phase is the phase of consequence of whatever goes right or wrong during your day. In the morning phase, you have dreams, beautiful aspirations. In the afternoon, you execute the aspirations. At night, you retire on the aspiration. If you will have a roof over your, on your, over your head, it depends on what you did in the afternoon. And what you do in the afternoon depends on the quality of your vision in the morning. Either of these faces can happen at any time. A man can be 80. And when the world thinks that his light is going down, then suddenly the sun rises again. When the world says, that, ah, that fellow is over. All of a sudden, God just gives him one new vision. And from nowhere, he shoots out. This is the covenant of your days being renewed like eagles. And a man might be in the afternoon phase. And one medical report can show him that he's at night. And it is as though... With this report, the doctors are saying you have a few days, few weeks, few months, or few years to exit. And it is possible for a child who ought to be born in the morning to be born into the night if those who gave birth to the child didn't break into their morning before conception. A, 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 you know you get what I'm saying? A child can be born Although young, but he's born into the night. He can't even dream. Because the harshness, the reality of the environment, it's choking him. Although he's young, 
But the pain, the sorrow around, is showing him that you are at night. And you can have four generations at night. You can have ten at night. Some of you, you are coming from places where it's night. And it's, it's looking like you are the one upon whom the sun will rise. That when they look back, they will say, okay, there's a light in our lineage, at least. Someone that the Lord has decided to shine his light upon, it will be you. Amen. You will be that spot in your lineage where the light is shining. Amen. I say again, you will be that spot in your lineage where the light is shining. Amen. Sit down for a while. No, most of you here, wait. When the hand of God comes upon a man, regardless of the season he is, his day begins. It is your day when your light shines. So when they start singing that song, ah, I got it. The man at the pool of Bethesda, we, could, we, couldn't, we were not told the age he was when they dropped him there. But we knew he had been in a 38 year long night. Imagine a man 38 years of darkness being at a spot. And Jesus met him there. And regardless of how long the night has been, now it is important that the day begins. And all he had to say is, pick your bed and go. And his son rose. I told you about Joshua fighting with his men. They had not finished. Then the sun began to set. He said, let the sun stand still over Ajalion. Let the moon not hasten to go to his place till I finish. And God heard and the son obeyed. If there's anyone here whose sun looks like it's beginning to set, uh -uh, let your day begin. Amen. Let your day begin. Amen. Let your day begin. Amen. Sit down for a while. If a man is in his day example and another man is in his night and the man that in his night that light is not shining on begin to say prayers. I don't know if you have given beggars money and they are blessing you. In the name of Jesus it will be well with you. Some of you don't even say amen to that. Because what's the benefit of amen to a man who is at night? You feel like if your prayer works, it should have worked for you. But the same prayer, another man who is in his day, they might be age mate. And say, in the name of Jesus, from today it is well with you. You will say that amen with fervency. Because nothing is valued until it is seen. I know the world is trying to reorientate you, but I'm telling believe in the power of the blessing. Are you here? Believe in the power of what? The blessing. Your light will shine. Though. You won't be locked in darkness. Sit down for a while, guys. I've said it humorously. That some of us were born into the night. Born into the night. You hear people's stories. And sometimes you want to ask yourself, who arises from this dust and this kind of donkey hill? It is the man upon whom the Lord has established his hand.
when that hand comes, is the one who will lift the beggars from the dunghill and cause them to sit with princes. Ah, that one who lift men, his hand is over your head this morning. You, you say the amen as I pray. I say again, his hand is over your head. He's lifting you from the dust. He's lifting you from the gutters. He's lifting you out of the ashes. When the face of God shines upon a man, it looks like he's the one who knows how to do it best. It looks like it. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical steps to overcome fear. So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. 
you can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.